very familiar emotion that I want each and every one of you to really recollect and think about. Whenever you've been in a situation with your boss, your manager, with a team leader, with a teacher, do you ever see yourself looking at that person, maybe he's not noticing you, but you're looking at that person and you think, who the fuck put you in charge? <laughs> <laughs> Happens so often, right? How many of you have had that kind of situation where you have thought about this? Show of hands. Two days ago. <laughs> Two days ago. What was it? Uh, our PCL teacher who was kind of offended because we were asking questions. And you thought, bitch, who put you in charge? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Manali? What happened with you? You don't remember. Okay. <laughs> Arvind, what about you? Uh, so this was in my uh, college and the head of the Organization committee gave me a dump of idea. I was like, who the fuck put you in charge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, fantastic. See, this is something which is an emotion that I have felt very constantly throughout my life. I always feel that with my teachers in college, they expected you to respect them, but uh, never <laughs> And starting off with my very first job, which I thought was going to be the shit, which is supposed to be the thing where I'm going to make it in life, I realized that the managers there are complete dumbasses, right? These people are barely one or two years older and they say, hey, you gotta call me sir, you gotta call me ma'am. I'm like, no, why? <laughs> You're just a couple of years older and I do not see you in that you know, leader image to actually respect you in that way. So that was a complete no-no with me. Reflecting back towards all of these leadership positions that I could have, that I've held throughout whatever phases of life right now. The very first thing that comes to mind is school. Because in school, every single year, the class teacher or whoever would just walk in and randomly assign people so many different leadership roles. There's a class of 40 and there's like a bench leader, there's a board leader, there's an assignment leader, and you are PT leader, you're the line leader if somebody has to go to the <laughs> ground, right? So many things would be there. But there is definitely one of those leadership positions which was the most coveted, the one that I enjoyed to the fullest, and that was the board leader. <laughs> because being a board leader, means that you get to jump in at emergency situations, right? The mass teacher is doing a complicated calculus problem over here and she's run out of chalk. She says, oh my god, there's no chalk! <laughs> at that point, the board leader is like, board leaders here, why here? <laughs> you get to take a nice stroll on the corridor, you walk by, you look at all the girls in the other class, <laughs> you get a couple of chalk pieces and you come back. Fantastic, you saved the day. And then comes another major responsibility of being a board leader, which I love the most. Once you're done cleaning the board, you get to go outside the class, you stand there like Shah Rukh Khan, <laughs> and you just dust it. <laughs> Again, there's like a huge cloud of chalk dust, you get to see girls in the corridor, you get to see girls in the other classes, right? This was one of the most fun activities. If you ask me, I feel that this was the childhood equivalent of taking a smoke break. <laughs> so that is about a small, you know, roles of leadership that I could enjoy through school. And then once we made progress into the higher grades, 7th grade, 9th and 10th, I was in the council on all three years. Now when I say council, it sounds important, but I didn't do shit. <laughs> My school was lame and we did not have any such activities where students would actually go on to take responsibilities, showcase their leadership skills. If you are a council leader, it means that you have to be at the assembly 15 minutes early and you stand there and look at people's nails. <laughs> you look at people without ties. You see some guy wearing black socks instead of brown, major violation. <laughs> so the order of the day would be catching such offenders. And I could see that transition, right? Seventh grade council leader, I was a big fat nerd. I wasn't that big, I mean I was small, but I was fat. <laughs> small fat nerd just standing in the corner like this with my patch that says all India, looking at people, hey your nails are not cut. <laughs> Where is your badge? You also come this side. <laughs> Hair not cut, come this side. <laughs> that is what would happen. And then ninth grade, you know, you're a little older, so you get a little more lenient. Right? So you see, you see your friend, like, it's not cut. Macha, to more, it's cut. Girls, you see them, like, get a manic, you know, what is this? <laughs> That's what would happen. And then tenth grade, of course, I thought I'll be the president. That didn't happen. And I then I thought I'd be the sports leader. That of course didn't happen because that's the impact. <laughs> Cultural leader, I was the most uncultured swine in the school. <laughs> so that is something which did not happen. So I got something that my uh, reputation would deserve. That was house captain. <laughs> so not a lot of work done there. And when I think about 
what to reflect on in terms of leadership, in terms of what I've been doing through these years, nothing concrete was in my mind to reflect on until I decided to dig a little deeper through all of these memories and I realized what my indirect influence with leadership was. So to give everybody a little bit of context, this was during the retirement party that my dad's, ofi my dad's office threw for him. I was back from a farmhouse hungover as hell, and I had to go to another resort where there was a huge party being thrown for my dad. So a little bit of context is that my dad was a government official, and he retired as the head of a region. So everybody in his office, everybody in his region, the cops, the health officers, whoever and whatever they were, everyone was gathered. And my dad, of course, had one beer, and he went to sleep. <laughs> I looked at him, I'm like, bro, what a noob. It's okay. <laughs> and I sat down with all the other people over there. They were people who had brought in nice bottles of whiskey just for my dad. And I said, you know what, relax, I'll take care of this. <laughs> so we sat down, we started drinking. It was one drink down, two, three, four, six, ten. And that is when everybody started really opening up. You know, throughout that night, there was that image of being the boss's kid, right? So every single person would come up to see, oh my god, your dad is so amazing, you're so lucky to be his son, he is so nice, he is so nice. That is all I heard. But 12 drinks later, you get to see that when you're talking to a couple of people whom you don't know that well, and you're talking about something that you may not know so well, you see these tiny expressions of snideness in their faces. When you realize that maybe what they're saying is not true. And that is when I got to reflect on what my dad's leadership impact was on that office. Because my dad, being the big, burly, built man with a huge French beard, is very intimidating. And he led his entire office by a lot of good administration skills, but mainly it was driven by one thing and one thing only. That was fear. People there were shit scared of my dad. If you do something wrong, the entire office knows because my dad yells so loudly. Right? So this is the kind of impact that my dad's leadership had on his office. And maybe not where I have uh, been exposed to so many leadership roles to understand, but I had a lot of key takeaways from these tiny experiences. I feel that the pillars of building leadership relies on core important things. Number one comes from experience and expertise. Number two comes from humility and respect. Number three is situational awareness. And number four is Emotions and empathy. <laughs> so this has been my reflection on leadership so far. May not have taken a lot of leadership roles, but been exposed to a lot of different things. And these have been my two cents on leadership. Thank you so much for listening.